Welcome to Pediatrics. Um, this is an uh, introduction to the course, and I certainly want to welcome you this semester. So this, um, the PowerPoint that I'm going over right now is, is our welcome PowerPoint. Um, I, I talk about the very first concept would be the elements of caring, and I know that you all have, ex um, you all have chosen nursing because you have decided that you're caring individuals. So I always go over what are the elements of caring that you bring to, to this semester. So um, the, this, this is the listing of the elements of caring, knowing, alternating rhythms, patience, honesty, trust, humility, hope, and courage. So let's go through each one of those. And the first one is knowing. What is it that you have to know to, um, to come to pediatrics? What are the things that you have to know? Take a minute and just reflect. What do you have to know? Well, maybe growth and development. Maybe um, uh, the differences in, in being with kids versus adults knowing some of the diseases, those would be some of the things that would make you a more caring individual. The second element of caring is alternating rhythms. And when I, I, I bet some of you guys are musicians. And when I think of alternating rhythms, I think of either um, how sometimes a drum will be faster or slower, but my favorite place to be is at the beach. So when the waves come in, and then they go out, then they come in a little bit shorter or a little bit longer, and then they go out again. So basically when I'm thinking of alternating rhythms when it has to do with, with kids and their families is when, do you know as a nurse when to go to a family or a, a child and intervene, or do you need to let them have some time and some space to figure some things out on them their own? So alternating rhythms. Patience. Now, who do we have to be patient with? Well, certainly the child, because children take and require patience. And who else do we have to be patient with? The families, exactly. So we're going to be patient with the child and patient with the families. And think about if you can empathize with these families and think, what would it be like to have a child in the hospital? You know, as a, as a parent, you're going to feel helpless and like you're not protecting your child and so you might snap and if you're angry and frustrated about your child being ill you may take out your anger and frustration out on the nurses so patience is really required as an element of caring another element of caring and by the way this was by a theorist named Myroff is the element of honesty now Kids know, generally speaking, when parents or adults are not honest to them. So as, as an, a nurse, if you go in and tell a child, this is not going to hurt you at all, and then you hurt the child, what have you lost? You've lost the next element of caring, and that is the child's trust. So be honest, and honesty is a very important element of caring. The other element we talked about is trust, though. Tr kids will trust you if, you if you have time to establish and develop that trust. Same thing with parents. So are you a trustworthy person? Do you do what you say when you say you're going to do it? The other element of caring that um, is required in pediatrics is humility. And I've been a nurse over 20 years, actually 30 years almost. I'm a nurse practitioner, but I learn something every semester from you and from the children that I encounter or from the parents. So having the humility to know that you're lifelong learners and that there are things that you can learn will keep you humble and learn from the parents. If you have a child with a chronic illness, maybe they have a, um, a, a gastric tube and, and you want to learn about that tube, then ask the parent to help you and show you how that they've taken care of it. Another element of caring is hope. So how, what is the hope that you bring to your practice? Kids are going to have diagnosis of, of cancer and cystic fibrosis and things that can actually kill them and shorten their lives. But are you going to be a person of hope and allow the parents to be people of hope? What hope do you bring to pediatrics? And then the last 
element of caring is courage. And it certainly takes a lot of courage for you all to choose nursing because it is a, it's a beautiful and challenging um, profession. But boy, it does take a lot of courage. And it takes a lot of courage to enter into the world of children, especially if you're not a kid person. So you might be challenged this summer or this, this fall about, um, or this spring about, you know, entering into the world of children. But take, you know, it does take courage. And it takes courage also to be a child and, a, and to be a parent facing the unknown and facing their fears. So these are the elements of caring. There are some other basic concepts that we can talk about as far as introductory concepts to pediatrics. But I would like you all to have an opportunity to journal about the caring that you're going to bring to pediatrics uh, for this, this course time. Um, and so that's what the question on the, the uh, slide says. It says, which attribute of caring do you bring to pediatrics, their ch the children and their families this semester? So I want you to reflect on what we just talked about and I want you to journal. It just can be a paragraph. You can choose one or you can choose two of those elements of caring. And I want you to journal and bring that journal to class when we meet. And um, if you're in the summer class, you're going to meet this coming Monday um, uh, on June 3rd. So bring that journaling with you on what elements of caring that you bring. Just one paragraph. So some other concepts that we're going to talk about with peds would be holistic. Now, what does that mean to be holistic? Well, that means that you're looking at the physical, the spiritual, the psychological, the economic, all the things that are required when children are in your care and families are in your care. That is called holistic approach. Um, we also need to recognize that children are part of families and there's all different models of families, family-centered care, but there's families that are families that are children that live in families that are divorced, children that live in families that are grandmas and grandpas raising them, children that are in single homes, fathers and mothers raising kids by themselves. There's a family, you know, I always ask the question of my children when I'm at my clinic in Jonesboro is who do you live with? And sometimes a little girl will say, I live with daddy, mommy's in jail. Um, um, there are also uh, cultural families where the extended family lives in the home. So what, is, what are the family types that our children are living in? And how do their communities uh, support them? And what is their culture? We have ch children that are Hispanic or children that are um, Asian or children that have cultural things that are meaningful to their family life. So remember, family-centered care is a basic principle of pediatrics. Another basic principle is health promotion and teaching. The term that we use is called anticipatory guidance. So what does that mean? It means that whenever you have an opportunity, whenever you go into a patient's room or have a patient, a child come into your clinic, what can I teach this child or family to make a difference in their life? And certainly with health promotion and teaching, it could be about their growth. It could be about immunizations. It could be about safety issues. It could be about how to make the child's cognitive world better through play or toys. So health promotion or teaching, the term we use in PEDS is anticipatory guidance. So for every age group, think about what can I teach? So if I have a four month old in my clinic, I'm gonna teach that parent about the immunizations the child needs, the fact that the child should have good head control, that they may be rolling over soon so they could fall off of a, a bed and so they need to protect them for safety. Every age group, you could talk about um, um, anticipatory guidance. We also have a concept of just uh, treating illnesses. So health promotion's big in kids because kids are out of the hospital more than they're in. But we do have specific illnesses that we treat for children. And the concept we use is called atraumatic care. Atraumatic, the prefix A means with, out, and then so we go without trauma. So without trauma, atraumatic care means that we're trying to minimize the physical and psychological trauma that children go through when they're sick or when they're in the hospital. So psychological means understanding where this child's growth and development is 
and then trying to meet their needs according to their growth and development. What about a traumatic care physically? How can we control a child's pain? How can we prepare them for painful procedures? All of those things fall within the realm of a traumatic care. And when you're, ta um, when you're listening to the Child Life Specialist videotape, um, Miranda McConnell's, she'll tell you some more other ways of uh, promoting a traumatic care. Um, Pete's information is changing constantly and some of the topics you'll see here are immunizations. I mean the CDC.gov is where you can get the latest um, information about pediatric immunizations all the way from newborn to adolescence. Um, so immunizations are constantly changing. We now have of course um, uh, immunizations for uh, preventing cervical cancer. The, HPV prevention for both boys and girls, that is the most recent. Um, so that's interesting. And also, you know, just knowing about immunizations and when are they contraindicated, and certainly, you know, if there's allergies or if there's been any kind of anaphylactic reaction, and if a child is immunocompromised, they need to avoid the immunizations that are live viruses. Another thing that's constantly changing is updates on pain care. So we're gonna talk about hospitalization and pain control in, in just a very short while, but what about promoting atraumatic care? What is the current information on sweet ease, which is a something a baby could suck? It, you know, while they're getting a heel stick, how can we help them become more comfortable? Or the use of Emla cream, which is a cream you put on an hour before you would start an IV. How can we help children with that? So updates on pain care and also skin care. Um, children that have to be in a hospital setting um, could have exposure and breakdown of skin. And you've already had foundations and you've learned about all the different kinds of you know, friction uh, and a bedridden person can get. But skin care in children is also important. Um, another issue we touch as kids, and we have a ton still of lead poisoning in the United States, especially vulnerable children up in, in inner city where they have um, housing that has paint that's before 1978. Those kids are exposed to lead chips and that exposure to lead paint, or we build playgrounds over old lead smeltering plants. So what is going on with lead poisoning and why the, the normal uh, lead should be zero. And we have kids with lead poisoning that can cause growth and development delays and learning delays. Um, what's the latest information on lice? Pediculosis uh, capitis, lice is, the treatment of lice is actually, there's been a new um, regulation that just has changed in the state of Tennessee th just this past month. And whether or not we send kids home, and it turns out we don't. If kids have lice now, we don't have to send them home. But what is the newest care for treatment of head lice that's not gonna cause neurological poisoning with some of the chemicals? Uh, another issue in peds is crib death or SIDS and sudden infant death syndrome. And of course, you all are probably familiar with the back to sleep campaign where all babies should be on their backs for sleeping um, and, instead of prone or down on their face. And then of course, smoking families and fam babies that are uh, premature or have been sick are more vulnerable to SIDS. So what are the latest information about SIDS? Pediatrics also has to do with informed consent. And so what are the informed consent laws? If you all want to know, you should go to the stateoftennessee.gov. And if you go there and, and type in informed consent in the, um, in the Googling space, it's really in the, uh, in, in the little box, you'll see that in the state of Tennessee, there are specific rules about teenagers and informed consent. But we do have something called the emancipated uh, minor, and that is a teenager that can make decisions for themselves. If a child that's a teenager is pregnant or married um, or has a child, they are emancipated, and so they can make decisions for themselves. And the same thing with confidentiality. Certain children at certain ages in the state of Tennessee, children that are 16, have a legal right to um, it's not only make some decisions for themselves, but also say who can see their confidential information. So knowing 
what your state laws are and also the rules of children are important. But pediatric nursing does demand evidence-based outcomes. So when we talk this course, we'll talk, I want you all to look for articles that support some of these pediatric concepts. And, and I will be referring you to some different articles and say, you know, this is the research out there, but we need you to be part of that research team to do more information on these different issues. There is something called the art and science of pediatric nursing. The art is being able to approach kids and work with kids and understand how to communicate with kids based on their growth and development. And then the science is knowing their, you know, what's the diseases that are going on and what is the latest research about these different areas of pediatric nursing. So what I'm hoping that we can do in this course is balance between having you understand communication and approach and growth and development and bringing that together with your caring elements and then understanding enough about the science and the theory and some of these diseases so that you will be able to holistically care for children during this time in pediatrics. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.